Greetings and welcome to our Sunday morning service for May the 17th. And our service this Sunday is about the Advocate and the Ascension. We'll begin with the acknowledgement of the territory. As we work to recognize and give thanks for God's goodness in every moment of our lives, it becomes even more important for us to recognize and give thanks to those around us. This morning, like many mornings, we gather in this place built by the work of our ancestors. This morning, like many mornings, we gather in this place built on the traditional lands of the Dakota Sioux, the Anishinaabeg, the Cree, the Obi Cree, and the gifts of the Métis people. We give thanks for our Indigenous brothers and sisters, for their grace and willingness to share, and pray that we will work to build and deepen right relationship of thanksgiving and hope for the future. May God bless all with love. And we're going to begin by rising and shining. And let us hear our words of call to worship. Christ is risen and has ascended to the Father, and yet Christ is here with us today. Christ's presence is a mystery. God's kingdom does not depend on politics and power, but is based on peace and justice. God's kingdom is a mystery. When our lives are tested with trials and suffering, we are told to be glad and shout for joy. The Christian life is a mystery. Come, worship with us, search the scriptures, receive the word, and sing and move with the music as we explore the mysteries of our God. It's a song of praise to the maker. It's a hymn of love to the love. 
be seated. Let us share in prayer together. We sing to you, our Creator. We pray to you as well. You surprise us in the resurrected power of Jesus' life, death, and new beginnings. He shows up in the most unexpected places and acting in a manner that challenges our very beings. You call us by name. You provide us with brothers and sisters in the faith. And together we serve you. Encourage our living with your vision for openness, courage to love one another, and renewed hope for our lives together in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So my theme time this morning is called AA. And when we see the initials AA, most of us translate that to mean Alcoholics Anonymous. AA is indeed a an essential life-saving program for those who struggle with alcoholism. There is a program to work, steps to follow, a mentor and a sponsor to help you as you take each day and each moment, one day at a time. One day at a time, let go and let God, are just two wisdom phrases with AA origins. Today I'm using these two initials to stand for Advocate and Ascension, as I'm combining these two events for our service today. So the Advocate is the Holy Spirit. The Advocate is the mentor or the sponsor that is sent to be our wisdom guide through life, to help us through the day by day, each day at a time living. And the ascension speaks of the holy moment when that post-resurrection Jesus leaves the earth for the last time. Our language for this event is that Jesus rose into the heavens where he takes his place with God. A.A. Advocate and Ascension. Ultimately, we all need a sponsor and we all need a guide. We need help with the complications and the stressors of our everyday living. We need someone to help us when we stumble and to reassure us that we can indeed start again one day at a time. So these past weeks since Easter, we have focused on the resurrection appearances of Jesus <clears throat> Excuse me, and his need to teach just a little bit more before he left his disciples for good. And as he does his teaching during this time, 
He also reassures his disciples that he will not leave them alone. He will send an advocate. And so the day comes for him to take his leave, and Jesus ascends to the Father, and the disciples await a new advocate. Ascension Advocate AA. God never leaves us alone, leaves us always guided, gives us strategies to cope with living. We are supported. God remains faithful day by day, each day at a time, in order that we may actually let go and let God. Thanks be to God. AA. We're going to sing together a song called Love Us Into Fullness. and all-knowing God, I commit my failures as well as my successes into your hands. I bring for healing the people and the situations, the wrongs and the hurts of the past. Give me courage, strength, and generosity to let go and move on, leaving the past behind me and living the present to the full. Let me always be positive as I entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love, and the future to your providence. Amen. Give us 
Thank you, Ken. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. I'm going to share with you two scriptures, and one is uh, from John chapter 14, and this is where uh, Jesus is still present on earth, and he is speaking to his disciples and saying to them not to be worried. Uh, that he will be leaving, but he's going to send some help. And these words we often hear uh, at a funeral as somebody is leaving us, and we hope that they're not leaving us permanently. John 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will also love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and he will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and yet I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father 
is greater than I am. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does, you may believe. So that's how Jesus sets up that he's going to be going away and that God will send an advocate. And then our very next passage is the actual sending of the, of the advocate. So I read to you from Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 11. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And he replied, It is not for you to know the times or the period that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Amen. So we have lots of new lingo these days, and the new normal is probably (laughs) the one that we hear the most. We've developed this language, uh, uh, and we call it social distancing, the new normal. We talk about flattening the curb. We talk about curbside pickup, and there's just so much more. So the new normal. Normal is defined as typical, conforming to a standard, the usual or expected. So naturally then the new normal is a new way that becomes typical, a new way that is usual, and a new expected. So in these COVID-19 days, it seems almost every day there's a new normal. And in the new normal, we can expect to use hand sanitizer a lot more often. We can expect to wait in line at the store. We can expect to not get that handshake or that hug we once got. And now we actually phone ahead to see if a business is open and what their hours of operation might be. Children are not at school. Some adults are not working. We send one person to the store instead of going together as a group or a family. And what we want might not actually be in stock. We can expect to be asked to use Zoom or some other form of video conferencing. And if we don't have a computer at all, we certainly are missing out on many of the new normals that have shown us how to communicate differently. What we are doing here right now as a worship experience is our new normal. In our reflections, we've spent a fair bit of time talking about Jesus after his resurrection, what we call the resurrection appearances, talking about why they happened and how they happened. And so finally, when Jesus ascends into heaven, we can almost imagine someone trying to hold on to his ankle as he's rising up to heaven saying, don't go, come back here. We're not finished with you yet. We still need you. Perhaps you have a personal experience where a loved one was preparing to take their leave and you felt so unready to let them go that you just wanted to hold on. We are human you and I, and in our humanity, we become fearful. What will we do when Jesus leaves? The disciples angst. How will things change? Where will we get our guidance? Who will encourage us? Who will teach us? As Jesus rose towards heaven, leaving behind his disciples, change was initiated. 
Jesus had been the center of the community and with him gone, a new way and a new center had to be found. So on Ascension Day, we have this marvelously vivid image of Jesus being escorted into heaven by two angels and a new normal is ushered in with words like, gone, where, forever, really, what now, don't know, can't do it, no choice, gone. As much as we prepare for change and we intellectualize what the changes will mean, we are rarely ready when the change occurs. We didn't think it would happen like this, we say. We thought we'd have more time. We really couldn't have anticipated all of the consequences. And so gone seems very final. Enter the new normal, the advocate. Jesus really did his best to comfort his friends about his leave taking. He had time before he left and he did his best. And first and foremost, he forewarned them that he would be leaving. I will be leaving you. And he tried as best as he could to prepare them. And those post-resurrection appearances helped. They helped those disciples adapt in, because they had to adapt to a different way of seeing him. The new normal at that time was that Jesus was no longer readily recognizable by his physical appearance. And so they had to develop a deeper sense of knowing him. And so they developed that sense of recognizing Jesus through word and through deed and through action. But now that post-resurrection time is over as well and something new is being offered again. And this new normal is called the advocate. And the new normal is that the advocate indwells. And I quote from scripture, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you, and I love this word, forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you, end of quote. And then I paraphrase. Don't worry, my friends, I won't leave you orphaned. The father will give you another advocate. The spirit of truth, though, has no visible form, so it'll be hard to recognize. But it is a gift from God, a gift from God that dwells within you. Be at peace, my friends. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The spirit will live in you and you in it. God will send an advocate that will indwell, dwell within us. These are all different ways that the scripture expresses that God has no intention of leaving us alone when Jesus ascends. God will never leave us alone. But it doesn't seem to matter how many times we hear this message. It doesn't sink in with us. And so I remind you, in the beginning, there was God. And then God decided to come and live among us in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus. And then after that, another advocate is sent, a spirit, a spirit that has no fleshy body and cannot be killed and cannot be taken because it dwells within. Where we are, there it is. God as creator, God in the flesh through Jesus, and now God as spirit forever being with us. I do think that the case is well made that God will never leave us 
or forsake us. AA, the advocate. As Jesus prepares his disciples for this permanent leave taking, he speaks of God sending another advocate. He was the first advocate, and after he leaves, fear not, there'll be another one. AA, the ascension. When the day comes for Jesus to take his leave, the age of the new normal is ushered in, and that new normal does not have a bodily shape or form as it is spirit. This spirit is the spirit of God, the ever-present wisdom giver. This spirit is not out there or up there. This spirit is in here. It dwells within. It is indwelling. But what does that mean to us? To dwell within. Well, let's look at the word dwell. So a dwelling is a place where you live. It could be a huge mansion. It could be in a tent community. But it's the place where you live. To say that the Holy Spirit indwells means it doesn't matter at all where you physically live, as the spirit dwells within you. It's a gift we've been given, and we have it. The problem lies when some relegate this spirit to some small attic or locked up in a basement cellar under lock and key, and they don't acknowledge that they have been given the gift of the spirit. The spirit is meant to provide guidance for the entire person, free and abundantly providing wisdom to one's everyday living. It is not one little compartment that we lock away in our lives. So the question for us today is, well, thank God for the gift of the spirit, but where does your spirit live? Can people tell by your actions where your spirit lives? Do you think with the like-mindedness of God? Do you live your life as a creature of the world? Or do you dwell in the world as a creation of God? When we no longer see the world as good guys, bad guys, insiders, outsiders, winners, losers, when our way of seeing the world is no longer dualistic, when our field of vision is unified, when we see as God sees, then the spirit is indwelling within us. So blessed are those whose hearts are not divided because they belong to God. And blessed are those who are one in the spirit, literally one in the spirit. Before Jesus, there was God, and after Jesus, there is still God. There is God in the Spirit. May we believe the good news that God dwells within, that God is right here inside of us. Now, there seems to be a fair bit of soul-searching and introspection during these COVID-19 days. And perhaps you have been asking yourself questions about your life and your living and how you are living it. So perhaps the question to leave you with is, what is indwelling in you? Do you dwell as a creature of the world? Or do you dwell in the world as a creation of God? May we live lives of faith and hope and love, loving as God would love, and may the spirit of truth truly dwell within us, and may our new normal be one with the spirit. Amen. We're going to uh, sing together a hymn called Holy Spirit, Truth Divine.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Creator God, we have so much to be grateful for, especially the beauty of your marvelous creation. For the expansive sky, the mountains and trees, the bees and the flowers, the cattle and sheep, wild grasses that blow in the wind, and the crocuses that let us know it's spring. For all of it, we are grateful. In these COVID-19 days, when human contact is not advised, it is our pets, often, that give us love, and, of course, our ability to experience fresh air and nature that feeds our souls. Even if all we can do is open a window and breathe in the fresh air, we are satisfied and grateful. We are thankful to be living. We pray now for many, for those who are ill and in hospital or care facilities without visitors to help them pass the time, for those who have loved ones in care facilities and they are unable to visit, for families who've had a death and are not able to say goodbye through a traditional funeral service and fellowship gathering, for those who are unemployed, whose companies may not withstand the many days without business income, for those whose income has dried up and their bills and mortgage needs to be paid, but the money is not there. We pray for those places of employment who are going beyond to keep their employees paid and buoyant in this tough economy. For all those whose lives are daily out in the world providing essential services for others. We pray for ourselves, those of us who struggle with addictions and mental health issues that are exasperated at times like this. For all of the people around the world who are doing their best to provide the most accurate information they can to aid in decision-making regarding the safety of all, we give thanks. For our brothers and sisters in the affirmed faith communities who were vandalized this week with homophobic graffiti, we pray for them. We pray for sensibility, responsibility, respectability, and faithfulness in the days and the weeks to come. And in the name of Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. Please remember to continue your support of Central United Church during these times. You may do so by putting a, a check in the mail, by PAR, through the uh, mail slot at the church. In any way that you can find possible, we need your support as much as we always do. Thank you for those who have. And so I offer you a word of blessing. As we enter into each new day, May we be grateful for the holy presence that is always with us. May we live with purpose, courage, and hope. Amen. And we leave singing, sent forth by God's blessing. Sing. 